Hello, sweets. My name is Scarlet. I am a hermit, and I want to get out more. But not really, so here's a game. Today, I will be escaping into... This game is called Four Mother Matron. I did not do much research into the game. I decided to just jump into it. It looks very interesting. So here I am. Okay. This game contains graphic content that is not suitable for children or those that are easily disturbed. Player discretion is advised. Consult the, you know, content warning text file in the game's directory if you would like an overview of all potentially sensitive content. Nah, I don't feel like it. The mother matron loves you and considers your health incredibly important. Somehow, I feel like that's not true. The pessimist's credo, or one of them, is that non-existence never hurt anyone, and existence hurts everyone. Thomas Ligotti, the conspiracy against... Oh, I didn't get to read that. My consciousness swirls in an inky black river of nothing. It feels familiar. I've been here before. And every time I'm here, I always think it's going to last forever. And yet... Hmm. Looks like an operating room. Wakefulness. Somehow my consciousness stirs. Where am I? I feel so strange. Deeply numb and lost, almost. I rack my brain trying to make sense of things. Questions that should have obvious answers. None come to me. Questions such as, where am I? Who am I? What has happened to me? What do I know? I know I exist. I know I breathe. I know this room is disgustingly warm despite its cold, cold walls. I know that horrible wet sound is driving me mad. I know red blood flows through my veins. I know my heart pumps that blood beat by beat. I know the inside of my stomach bubbles and burns with acid. I know my bladder feels like it's about to burst, filled with urine. I know my intestines pipe poop throughout over a meter of contracting meat tubes coiled in my belly. But not much else. I don't remember what distinguishes me from any other sack of meat. I rack my brain. I reach back as far as my mental arm can reach, underneath the old shelf full of baggage that writhes and prevalence at me and glares at me, despite having no eyelids that I can perceive. The weight of the shelf is crushing my arm, the act of recalling it in itself. Painful. It would be easier to just leave it all there. In the dark where it might be forgotten forever, just like most of the people that were sent down there into those hopeless tunnels. The place I lost myself and everything. But no, I won't forget. I have to remember, or no one else will. I reach back further. The weight of a sharp corner starts to scrape layers of skin as I reach further in. Finally, my mental hand clasps around something. A small and soft object that compresses under my fingers. I pull my arm out from under the shelf. The sharp corners gouge my arm open. The crimson river runs rapidly and splashes onto the floor. Except, how? My arm's never moved. I'm not even bleeding. It's all in the middle. I felt it, though. I felt my skin shredding. I heard the sound. I can even still feel the object between my fingertips. What am I holding? Why, it was just what I was looking for. It's a memory. It's small and hovers like faint smoke in the air, but it's a start. A pathway to more. Yes. I'm starting to remember now. Lizzie. That's it. That's my name. My name is Lizzie. It's nice to meet you. That's only a start of the breadcrumb trail, though. 
I have to follow it. It's easier to live through a memory when you can share it with someone. You'll listen, won't you? You'll help me retrace my steps. Good. Good. Oh. But where to begin? Where should the dark fade? Where should I... Wake up! Hey, it looks like we are in a workshop. Some guy. Finally! Jeez. You were out cold, Liz. Okay. I, uh... What? I was covered in sweat. My eyes darting around like flies to figure out my surroundings. I was in the hangover of a deep dream that clung to me like glue. In front of me was the blurry shape of a person. A boy? Young man? Male, at least. He's staring at me with concern and frustration. Where am I? Who are you? He frowns you at really me. You really were out there to the world, huh? You're at the workshop, Lizzie. In Pack Rat, where you work. And I'm technically your boss. Though I like to think we're all on the same team here. My name is Fred. Starting to ring any bells yet? Okay. Oh, right, right. And, uh, what do I do? Looking at him now, Fred gives me the impression of a chubby bear. His face almost has a snout. His nose twitches back and forth when he's not talking. Maybe it's dust irritating his nostrils. <laughs> or some other form of powder. He pinches the bridge of his nose and closes his eyes. Please tell me you're kidding. No. I suppose even with no memory, it's not that hard to deduce. There are sewing machines throughout the room, and I'm seated at one. Clearly I sew. I think I may even have sewn the sweater I'm wearing. I must be good at it, too. It's soft and comfy. Then again, I can see little scars speckled on my fingers. Were they scars of experience or scars of clumsiness? Let's say it was the former. I let out a little chuckle and smile. <laughs> yeah, I am. How'd you go in there, huh? In truth, I was only half kidding, but I assumed, hoped, I'd start remembering the other parts once I woke up more. For I didn't find the joke quite as funny. You people sometimes. And... What do you mean by that, Fred? Hmm? What do you mean by that? By you people? Tell you what, Lizzie. Yeah, You're tell clearly me. running low on steam. Clearly. You really shouldn't do this. But you need And why are you going to? The oh, mother okay. matron won't appreciate your slacking. Perhaps you can make it up in the coming weeks. Mm. Go home. I don't get like some Fred. sleep. Maybe stop by Spruce's clinic, too. Get a checkup. You have two days off, Max. Two days off? Oh. oh my goodness. That is so kind of you, Fred. Two whole days. But if we're being honest, it's not actually two whole days. It'll be one whole day. And then you'd spend that second day preparing to go to work the next day. Isn't that great? Okay, okay. I'll go home. Except, where was home? Wake up, me. I sat there for a moment, trying to remember where to go. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that. Lizzie, what? go. Okay, but something strange is going on here, Fred, and I don't like it. Ooh. Wearily, I stumbled out of the workshop. I feel exhausted to my bones, aches and throbbing pain deeply seated in my flesh. There is a dream-like haze resting on the world around me. It feels unfamiliar. Clearly, this is a place I should know. This is apparently where I work. And yet I have no idea where I am. I rack my brain and I pat my pockets, hoping to find a clue. 
fortunately for me, there is one. A small notebook. I open it and thumb through. Bits and pieces are starting to come back to me as my eyes scan the scattered diary entries, notes, and doodles. I finally find the most helpful page. It's a map. Stay away. No buy. Nature's Plaza. Right, I remember better now. Boss was correct. I was in Pack Rat right now. Named so because of how densely filled the area is. Every building here is some kind of workshop or storage zone. Some places here are packed so full that you barely can walk around them. Though, unfortunately, the place I worked was roomier. More broadly speaking, I'm in the board. The town city? I call home. A secluded place enclosed in makeshift walls made from whatever was available. Scrap metal, old furniture, repurposed rubble. Outside the walls is an endless miasma of fog that obscures things. No one's really seen what's out there, and anyone that's attempted to explore the mist has never returned. For God, Spruce. If I had to describe this place, I guess I'd say it's like a half-empty glass, filled with dirty water. The glass is fragile, too. Does that make any sense? Well, it does to me, anyways. More important than metaphors, though, I know where home is now, and I could feel it deep in my bones that I needed to sleep. Though, the detail on the map leaves something to be desired. Thanks, past me. I'll figure it out. My memory is just hazy from being so tired. And so, I pick a direction and start walking. The winding streets don't make much sense to me, but I follow them all the same. I am alone, but muffled voices keep me company. Sometimes, muffled sobs, too. I try not to focus much on them. I think I used to in the past, but my heart couldn't take it. Nothing I could do even if I want to, anyways. Everyone's got to do something for the collective. Everyone's got their jobs, as I have mine. Whatever the mother matron needs of us. My shoes are old and worn, only offering a meek defense against the hard asphalt streets. It fit well, though, and the ground is dry today. They get the job done. They're like everyone here, in a lot of ways. Doesn't matter how weathered you are, the fact you're still together means something in you is strong enough to keep you together. May your spirit grow like the calluses on working hands or the soles of your feet. So the mother matron says. <laughs> She's like, like, oh. In other words, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. You grow through adversity and by the end of everything, you're the best person you can be. That's not what I got from that. What I got from that immediately was, the life of luxury is too good for you. If you want to live, you better work. Work until your hands fall off and your feet go numb otherwise I'll kill you that's what I was feeling from that on that first statement gives all the hard parts of your life a kind of silver lining or at least that's what I take from it mm -mm. I personally don't want that kind of silver lining or like your life only has meaning if you worked yourself to the bone for a majority of it like, I actually want to relax and enjoy my time. <laughs> oh, a mouse or something? My thoughts are interrupted by a lump beneath my shoe and the panic jelp of a small rodent. I lift my foot and the thing scurries back under the grate beneath my feet. Okay. There below the street is a tunnel full of thousands and thousands of rats scurrying for dear life through endless canals. I doubt the poor things even know where they're going. Oh! Is that... Wow, I didn't even notice at first. I thought that was like water rushing by, but you know what? <laughs> if I was walking along and I was passing a grate in the street and I saw thousands and thousands of rats, I'd immediately start planning on my move because I can't live in this place. That's a lot of rats in one area. One step, the one I stepped, the one I stepped on, somehow managed to climb its way up out of the grating, only for my clumsiness to scare it back where it came. I kind of felt awful inside for that. Throughout the boarding is a network of tunnels designed to tunnel the endless swarm of rats underneath our feet. No one knows where the little critters all come from, but they flow like water beneath the streets. Thousands upon thousands of rats compacted against each other, covered in filth and God knows what else. 
waste matter clumped in their fur. A primary source of protein. Some kids have to fish for rats, sorting through ones that are too sick and diseased to eat and ones healthy enough for consumption. Oh, so we're living in that kind of world. <laughs> Where waste covered rats are our main source of food. Well, okay, I'm getting a feel, I'm getting a feel. The yield is never particularly high and the rats never particularly taste good unless you know how to prepare them. Well, I would start by washing them with some soap and water. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You gotta start with that. Some disinfectant, you know. The one I stepped on had to have been rather spry. Poor thing. I could only hope maybe my unintentional intervention gave it more time before some kid impaled it on a stick and roasted it. Well, the kids gotta eat too. I don't want to think about this anymore. Why are you a vegetarian? I decided to keep walking to Spruce's clinic. Um, hello? Spruce? You here? Yes, yes, I'll be right there. Stitching someone up back here. Please take a seat. Okay. Um, what's this? Birds. I sit down on a stiff chair with minimal padding. It makes my tailbone ache, but I'll endure it. Spruce is known as the resident healer of the boarding. She taught herself by reading pharma pharmacological. No, pharmacological. I guess I was right. In medical books. She found the library as well as through experimentation. This isn't to say there aren't others that try their hand at medicine, but to put it simply, none of them are as good as Spruce. If she can't fix you up, you're out of luck. She walks into the room. Ah, Lizzie. Been a while. Hello. Some dark bags under your eyes. Working long hours? Not sleeping lately? <laughs> Guess not. I passed that at work today. Fred told me I should see you. She rolls her eyes and gives a fake laugh. Ah, of course he would. You have to be sick. It can't be his fault at all, right? <laughs> Jerkwad. Let's give you a checkup anyways. Follow me to the exam room. Mm-hmm. A small joke, as the exam room is just across from where I'm sitting. She gestures for me to sit on one of the beds, and after doing so, she does her usual routine. Checks my blood pressure, pulse, shines a light down my ears, nose, mouth, lightly strikes a mallet on my knee. I look around the room, noticing that it's gone under some renovation since I last visited. I'm amazed you found the time to redecorate the place. It's looking good. Oh, thanks. I squeeze in a little here and there. Usually when I have to watch someone close while they sleep. That's a creepy way of putting it. Oh, you know what I mean. Folks in recovery. At least a few people that experience seizures. Stuff like that. Anyways, I'm proud of how it's looking. Genuinely can't believe I found that poster in such nice condition. I'm happy with how the Phoenix is turned out, too. <laughs> Looks familiar. I look towards the bony fellow at the side of the room. What about him? Is that a real skeleton? Bruce checked my heartbeat in my lungs using a stethoscope. No, it's plastic. A patient that Scasm Junks a lot gave to me as a thank you. Trust me, if I wanted to get a real skeleton, I wouldn't have to look very hard. Really <laughs> wish I had a skull, though. She nods and puts down the Everything stethoscope. Seems good from what I can see. But that's just what I can see. Tell me how you're doing. Oh, you know, I'm living in a world that's not got much hope. It's very small, very compact. Um, we're living off of rats. Yeah, where are the vegetables? Do we even have vegetables? And and you're saying that this poster back here. It's like your prized possession, like you were shocked by that. Like, this is renovation? This here? 
But you know what? You're doing the best you can in this world. It's just Anything odd? not it. Odd sensations, pain, nausea, shortness of breath, stuff like that. Hmm, how'd you know? I'm a little sore, but I think that's just from overworking. Maybe bad posture, being tired. I've also been seeing things. I wouldn't believe, Bruce. I've seen some things. Well, I mean, I've only seen like one thing so far, but it wasn't a good thing. No. Sometimes, sometimes I'll be standing there and the world suddenly shifts. Like, right over my eyes, it turns into something horrible. Horrible sounds, flesh growing where it shouldn't be, things that aren't really there. My heart starts beating really fast and I freeze terrified and just like that the world's back to normal and i'm panicking over nothing my dreams are really strange too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you don't believe me do you she shakes her head wasn't what she meant i actually do believe you just thinking wish i could say this is the first time i've heard something like that but <sighs> what's it mean doc how long i got but well, some of the mumblers I'm taking care of now said stuff like that before they turned. Turned? Really? Yeah. Can I trust you to keep turned? a secret? I'm only telling you because I think it's important, you know. Okay. Uh, sure. Contrary to what people think, the crepuscule isn't the only place where mumblers are made. Not What's anymore, a mumbler? at least. You're kidding. Not in the slightest. Granted, people have broken down before around the boarding. You know that. Lots of our neighbor brothers and sisters struggle with feelings of anxiety and depression. Of course, they're living off of rats. But this is different. Mumblerism, or whatever you want to call it, is a much more rare and severe thing. It's like a complete it's like a complete detachment from reality. People stuck in a looping nightmare that never ends. And all they can do about it is ramble. A looping... A looping nightmare, huh? That's... Mother, help us. And it's happening around here now? Why haven't I heard about this? As I said, it's really rare. I only have a few cases out of all the people I treat. And if the AC gang's been dealing with any, they sure aren't sharing. Mm. I'm trying to keep it under wraps, as I haven't gotten to study enough people to get a grasp of the emerging symptoms or causes. And mm. I don't want people to panic. Let me guess, do you want to use me as a guinea pig or something? Mumblers already don't get the best treatment by most people. Imagine how people would be if they jumped to the conclusion that they're contagious. Yep, there would be rioting in the streets, pitchforks, and torches ablaze. Ah, I can see what you mean. To be clear, I don't want you to jump to the conclusion that that's happening to you. You might simply be having sleep deprivation induced hallucinations. Or maybe some gas from junks is making the air a little funny. Mm -hmm. Hell, maybe this shit. Y she stops herself for my sake. I mean, shipyard I mean. is just more rank than usual. <laughs> I thought it important to warn you, though. Okay, so at least we know that that yard. For now, I'll Ill. give you some medicine that should help with the anxiety. Disgusting. Stop back for regular checkups, and we can keep an eye on it. See how it develops. Hmm. Sorry. A little tired. Uh, but yes, sure, Doc. Of course. What's gonna be in it? A mixture of lavender, valerian, lemon balm, St. John's wort, and some other stuff that makes it taste good. My latest and so far most effective concoction, or so my patients tell me. Lavender relaxes you. Valerian, valerian root was it? What goes that? Lemon balm. I guess it's just for lemony flavors. St. John's wort. Hmm. Okay, nothing seems out of place right now. Thanks, Bruce. Anything else worrying you today? No, I think that's it. Frey gave me some days off to go sleep, so I'll go do that once I leave. Alright, that's good. I don't 
don't see anything else abnormal with you, so I think we're done. Oh, I'll give you some tea that you can drink that can help you fall asleep if you have trouble, just in case. What is this, sleepy time tea? While I go get stuff together for you, can you run that bucket of food over there to the shack out back? Mm-hmm. Of course. The mumbler shack? Yeah. It's about lunchtime, and they need to eat. Would you mind? I mean... No, not at all. <laughs> Great. Thanks. There's keys hanging up by the door. Mumblers? Okay. So I'm going to assume that they're just harmless, just huddled up, mumbling to themselves about some nonsense, right? And I'm going to guess, like, that's just how it starts, huh? Like, they get aggressive later on, huh? I exit through the back door, which leads to a small yard with a small, roughly shed-sized building, maybe slightly larger than that. I've never liked coming back here, as ashamed as I am to say. It's always good to help the mumblers, but, I mean, I can kind of hear them from here. It's very unsettling. Just endless word solid. If you try to parse what they're saying, you get these horrible vignettes of misery that you wish you could unhear. They can't help it, though. And I shouldn't feel threatened, even if I find it uncomfortable. Mumblers are harmless. I repeat that to myself as I unlock the shack door and enter. Inside a somewhat cramped but generally well-kept bunk room, some bodies are sleeping. Others are sitting up front on the bed or standing near the corners. Let me listen here, see if I can hear. Have you ever heard the song of the grass? None of them noticed me. They lost in their own nightmare loops. It is a little hard to ask to, you know, pinpoint one thing at a time. Gosh, poor things. I really wish I knew how to help them. These people deserve better. Most of them were hand selected by the Mother Matron to brave the horrors of the Crepuscule, a labyrinth of darkness that lies beneath our home, full of terrors that are kept at bay by a locked tunnel. No one really knows why the Mother Matron sends people down there or what they end up finding, but you can see the effect it has. At least on the ones that made it back home alive. I shuddered to consider what could have happened to the poor souls that didn't return. I could only hope that they passed on peacefully and whatever ended them was swift and painless. I ponder almost if that end would be preferable to what the mumblers go through now. They're alive, but can you call this living? And these ones here in Spruce's care are the lucky ones. Many don't get the help they need. Some are hurt, bullied, killed at least once. People call them wastes of space, drains on our ever dwindling resources, miles to feed that can't contribute anything meaningful, or so people say. But they're people. They didn't choose this to be so broken. They need help. They need love. I want. I would want people to take care of me if I ended up like this. I don't know. Maybe that line of thinking will lead us to starve to death someday. With all those rats. <laughs> I doubt it. But my morality holds up when my body is dying for weeks of no food. Can I eat the concept of doing the right thing? I would like to think, though, that it's preferable to die because of the good things you did rather than to survive because you gave up your humanity and compassion. I actually agree with that. Yeah. At least right now, I feel like that's the choice I would make. Anyways, I've been kind of standing here holding a bucket of sandwiches and water for a while while I was lost in thought. Sandwiches? I thought all y'all had were rats. But apparently I was led astray. You have bread as well. I dropped the bucket in the middle of the room. Do they like, come get the sandwiches and water themselves? Just spruce feed it to them later? Hmm. Question I will seek an answer to another day. I leave, gently closing the door behind me. I get my medicines from spruce on the way out of the shed and head home. Feeling my body already starting to power down, I walk through the door to house, ready to throw myself on the mattress before something catches my eye and freezes me in my sleep.
Resting on top of my bed was a paper envelope with a red wax seal, emblazoned with the matron symbol. My heart sank to the bottom of a deep, dark canyon inside me, and bile began to bubble and churn violently in my stomach. <sighs> I reached to pick up the envelope, hoping that this was an illusion, a trick of the light. It wasn't. It was real. As real as can be. The letters with the red wax seal were a legend amongst the kids in the boarding. They say that it's the worst, most horrible piece of paper you could ever own in your entire life. I undid the seal and removed the letter inside. I unfolded it. My eyes started back and forth, scanning the page. It read as follows. Dear child. Dear child. Oh, the they're gonna read it for me. Okay. You warms me so. Seeing you and your siblings grow through the years is always my special delight. I give so much of myself every day to ensure you all remain safe and secure inside these walls. Alas, I cannot do everything on my own. Every so often, I must rely on my children's support to do what must be done for the collective good, even if it means sending my darlings into the jaws oh, of no. danger. Oh no. This letter is to inform you that you have been personally selected to become a surveyor. This is a title of great honor, bestowed no, it's upon not. those that will brave the depths of the crepuscule for your more matron's pride as well as the continued survival of the boarding. You will be paired with two boys named Pucks and Rich. Pucks as soon as you Rich. receive this letter, you are to meet with them, make preparations for your journey below, and visit me at my dwelling in Mother's Tower. Attempts to shirk your duty will be met with severe punishment. Mm. I will see you soon, my dear, with all <gasps> the love in the world. Your Mother Matron. Who is this mother matron and why do we follow her like a god or something like what 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 power does she have over us that we will do whatever she says and when she says it? I stare at the letter. My legs begin to wobble, my hands start to tremor, the letter floats to the ground like the way they describe leaves and books. I start breathing fast and hard in my body, entire body quakes. My eyes roll to the back of my skull as I pass out and collapse to the floor. You're about to become a mumbler or a dead person. Ah. Back here. Did I die? Was that everything? Was that the end of my memories? <laughs> kind of abrupt, to be honest. Okay. Okay. What the? What is this thing? What in the name? What are you? What is anything? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's true. This creature can hear my thoughts? Looks like it's me, though. Nothing. I mean, I mean, I mean, I guess. I mean, if everything stayed as nothing, then I wouldn't really have an opinion on the matter because, like, I wouldn't be there. True. True. You're not wrong. Um not everything feels happy, ma'am. Or whatever. You're happy that they exist. Hmm. Oh, 
I mean, you you had me in my thoughts for a moment. I was following you. I was following. Pardon my language, but what the fuck is this thing talking about? And why does it kind of look like me? Ignoring my confusion, the creature steps around me and outside of my vision. Okay. It fiddles with something behind me. The slurping sound grows faster. The world fades again. What's going on here? Messing with my brains or something? Probably messing with my brains, huh? I'm awake again. Deeply confused, but awake. I sit there on the ground, frozen for a while before reality hits me again. I stare at the painting on my wall. Her arm looks weird. Mother Matron. Out of every person here that could have ever been selected, she ends up picking me. My mind is back to the bumblers and spruce. Them in the endless droning madness that's consumed everything about them. Entire people with dreams and personalities raced by trauma. Why? Why me? I think back to how I was supposed to work in a few days. How I was supposed to visit Spruce again to make sure I was better. To keep living longer. No matter what I wanted to do, the decision was made for me. Mother needed me. I was not the kind of person that wanted to find out what happened when mothers disappointed. Who is this mother that we are so eager to please? But, where to begin? After some thinking, I decided a good place to start would be by asking my neighbor sisters. There are a pair of twins named Janine and Katie. I'd like to think we were pretty good friends, and I was glad to have them as my neighbors. I approached the front stoop. Katie was reading from a book with a faded cover while her sister painted her nails with jet black nail polish. Hey, Oh, little hey, Lizzie. voice phone. Hey, Lizzie. You seem chipper. I thought you'd be more gloomy. What do you mean? Oh, well, I... I saw the poster come by and drop something off at your place. They don't come by that often. Surprise, the male boy doesn't want to visit the shit zone. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't explain that, did I? Well, you saw on the map that my home is in a place called the Shipyard, right? It's a... Uh, it's not actually called that. See, it's actually named after the fact that this area is where the majority of the sewage and waste is discarded. Oh, that's terrible. Thousands upon thousands of rats, and now mountains of excrement. I'm sure you can guess what the actual name is knowing that. Cursey makes me feel bad though, so I call it the shipyard instead. <laughs> You absolutely cannot evade the smell here. It's awful. It sticks to everything like a film. I've gotten mostly nose blind to it at this point, fortunately, though sometimes I still have to break out the perfume. Is it Oh my goodness. Those letters? Mm-hmm. Red seal. No. No. So I'm wondering, is this an actual game or <laughs> well, thank you, Janine. <laughs> Janine! What? No, 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 she's being realistic here. I like it. What? Just being real. It was nice knowing you. You too, Janine. Don't be so insensitive. No, no, no. I like I like the reality she's tossing at me. It's, it's okay. I'm good to just accept it. Now, is this an actual yeah. game, or is it just like a, a visual novel I'm just floating through? Anything we can help with? Well... Oh, I get some choices? What the... Oh, I could find... I just got my stuff when I leave. You. I had a phase where I read nothing but books about surveyors. Just in case I ever got picked, you know. Mm -hmm. Gotta go to bed. 
Back to the bed soon. So I'm gonna wrap this up after we finish talking to them. Her speaking is a little lower than the music. It's we knew the surveys before they left. Honestly, they're kind of dry and sad. Probably better to get the highlights from Stannis. Best advice I can give you: preparation is key. Try to be ready for everything and anything. Also, bring something sharp. Hope that helps. Mm. Yes, it does. Thanks. It does help. Thank you. Sorry, I don't think I know much more than you, I'm afraid. Yeah, the books never really went into what's down there. Mother Matron never really talks about it other than how dangerous it is. There's not any first-hand accounts of it to go off of. Most anyone seems to know is that it's like an endless series of tunnels with dangerous creatures inside. Some people say the Krepsicule is constantly shifting and morphing, almost as if it's alive. Okay. That's just a rumor. Again, no first-hand accounts. I don't know. I'm getting a vague idea of something here, but I'm not going to mention it. Just know that my brain is thinking something. Janine gives me a puzzle you look. Were a, fan of hers. a fair point. Gets thought for someone that has a framed painting of a person to not know much about them. I mean, I look up to her and read the scriptures like most everyone else, but it's different than reading a person. Who is this mother matron? She nods understandingly, then shrugs. Fortunately, I've never met her, so I wouldn't know. Or fortunately. Katie shrugs with an apologetic expression. She also has never met her. Okay. Nope. Can't say I know them. Katie. Me neither, sorry. Maybe you should ask around the market? I'm sure someone there would know. Okay, Medium Marissa. She's Medium Marissa. surprised what kind of information she can dig up. Mm. I recommend trying her cuts though. Unless you've got a barf bag. Why is she called Medium Marissa? Because she sells weird meat. Okay, okay. Was it people meet? Where do you need in a name? Okay. I can't help my curiosity. I don't know how relevant it will be to me, but I want to know. I try to peer over her shoulder and read the book along with her. The position is awkward. Katie can't help but notice. Katie looks up at me, smiles, and shrugs to say, "It's nothing that interesting. Go ahead." She hands me the book, keeping her hand on the page she's on. I grab it, holding it in the same spot so she won't lose her place. The cover is nondescript, save for the some initials on the spine. It might have had a dust jacket or something before that bore the title, but that's long gone, I am sure. Okay. Hmm. I have a hard time following. Lots of names I don't recognize. Something about someone named Nix and people or creatures. Hard to tell the context. They gave birth to and then people that those children gave birth to. Must be some kind of fantasy novel or something. Not that it has much relevance to my situation, or if it does, I'm sure. I sure can't see it. Okay, and Nyx bore hateful Moros and Thanatos, and she bore Hypnos in the tribe of. Oh, okay, so the. What was it? The primordial goddess Nyx? And like. Her children. She bore Hypnos. Okay, so Hypnos was like. God of sleep or something like that, right? And the tribe of On Onedai? Or something like that, I'm not a pronounce that word. And again, the goddess of the night, Nyx, the virgin, bore Momos and Ozis, and the Hesperides who guard the rich golden apples of trees bearing fruit beyond the glorious ocean. Also, she bore the Morai and the ruthless avenging. Dang! You were virgin, but you burthened all of these kids. 
all of these kids. Wow. <sighs> and the ruthless avenging kiddies, so named Clotho and Lechesis and Atropos. Wow, who give men at their birth both good and evil, both good evil and good, and they pursue the transgressions of men and gods. And these goddesses never cease from. Wow. And deadly Nyx bore Nemesis to afflict mortal men. She just be dropping kids like boom, 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 boom. And after her. A pit and Philodes and hateful Jedis and hard hearted Eddies, but abhorred Eddies for painful Ponos and Leith. Okay, so she's a grandmama now. And Leith and Limos and Algea, full of weeping. The Yismini? I don't know, I can't pronounce these words, okay? Don't judge me. And the Makai, the Phonol, and the and blah blah blah. Okay, 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 and boring and boring and boring. It's boring a lot of children's 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 as nature is and her coast who does more damage than any other earthly men when anyone of his knowledge swears to a false oath. Okay. I smile and hand the book back to Katie. That was just you know, thought lore. You guys can have my stuff when I leave. Get dibs on the bed. Janine. It's only true I might not be coming back. Lighten up, I'm kidding. Kind of. Let's be real though. Would dying really be the worst thing that could happen to you? Depends on how I die. Oh my god, what is with you today? But no, she is the realist here, okay, and I appreciate her. Like you and I haven't had this exact conversation before. Everyone else wants to make it happen. Like the toilet bowl they live in doesn't stink of shit. When it literally you know, does. Make you feel like closing your eyes forever sometimes. I know that if I was living in a place that was full of nothing but the poo poo. <laughs> I don't know. Janine, what are you even saying? That we'd all be better off dead? I mean, you're going to be eventually. Not like I'm rushing to the noose or anything, but I feel like it would be a relief. I just give it a couple Maybe decades. Way to look at life. Life can be hard, but there's always bright spots worth seeing. People to love, happy moments that stay with you forever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Katie doesn't see it, but Janine gives a, uh, I don't want to say it, but. <laughs> Motion while rolling her eyes. <laughs> Oof, the music is just drowning you out, Lizzie. Don't talk like that, Lizzie. You're going to come back. I know you will. I hope that I will. How long is this conversation, though? It doesn't matter. You'll be the first. Even if you don't believe it, I do. I believe in you, Lizzie. Okay. Uh, for what it's worth, if anyone was to ever make it back, I think it would be someone like you. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Janine. Of course. Alright. Thank you guys for your help. I should get going. A lump in my throat. I swallow and talk through it. It was really nice knowing you guys. Suddenly, Katie embraces me tightly. After a moment, she looks at me with twinkling, moist eyes. Lizzie, you better come back. I'll never forgive you if you don't. Bring something sharp, she said. Bring something sharp. She holds me for a moment longer, burying her face in my chest. Before she can stain it with tears, she pulls back. I can't think of the right words to say, so I simply smile at her and say thank you. Janine simply gives me a gentle wave. It's subtle, but I know that's something she rarely does for people. We'll be rooting for you. I hope so. <laughs> I'm going to need it. 
The atmosphere was chaotic as people rushed in and out to buy food and other supplies with their allowance. I felt my senses bombarded by the endless chatter and the myriad of smells, many of which were quite unpleasant, and I lived near a sewer. <laughs> Through the crowd I slipped to what I hoped was the west side of the market. I tried to keep my eyes above the crowd to find that mysterious, meaty Marissa character. Okay, wonderful, let me... There we go. Saved it. Okay. Alright now, sweets, it's bedtime for me. But I will be getting back to this game tomorrow. Thank you for watching and I hope you'll come back for the next one.